Bishop Larry H. Jordan Sr. and welcome to Moving People in the Right Direction. Text today is going to be, or should I say my topic today, is going to be releasing heaven to earth. Heaven has to be released to earth and we as a church, we know how to do it, but we're going to become greater in doing it. Releasing heaven to earth. Go to Matthew's chapter 4, and I'm going to uh, start at verse number 17. But before I go there, let me give you a little biblical history. <clears throat> John the Baptist is in prison. He's about to have his head removed because of a dance. But yet and still, he had to decrease in order for Jesus to come on the scene to increase, to bring forth the ministry of repentance, to build the church and to bring forth his message through the church that would be the edification for mankind. So when we look at verse number 17 in Matthew chapter four, it says from that time after John the Baptist was put in prison, the Bible says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus preached, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was an expression that through repentance, which we all have experienced, we felt the release of heaven to our inner man. Our heart changed. Our mind changed. We got control over our body. We subjected ourselves to the teachings and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And we lived to prepare ourselves to know how to please him in a body that was shaped in iniquity. The Bible says that, the scripture says, should I say, in sin my mother conceived me. So now we have this ongoing battle how we're going to yield ourselves and remember what the perfect will of God is for people to receive the kingdom of heaven on earth. And in order for heaven to be released, the first thing a person must do is repent. Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through 15. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to meet him and all and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now, I'm not going to read this all the way through, but I'm going to go back and, re and reference what I said earlier before John was put to death. John was preaching a, a message of repentance and remission of sins, meaning when the people were confessing their sins, heaven is being released. So I want us as a church to remember that whenever we plant seed, which is the word of God, that it is actually bringing the presence of the Lord. The word of God brings the presence of the Lord. Verse number 15, Mark chapter 1, 14 and 15. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now we see the word gospel there. <clears throat> that we have to first believe in the gospel to repent. Okay, so when a person repents and they believe in the gospel, heaven is released. The gospel of Christ becomes the power of salvation. Now when you go to Romans uh, chapter 1 verse number 16 it actually states that the gospel of Christ is the power unto salvation so 
after the word repent, when a person repent and they receive the gospel, heaven becomes real because explanation comes from the gospel of the life that Jesus says we are to live based upon preaching it. I want us to see how important this is. Now go to Romans chapter 10, verse number 13 through 17. It says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Verse number 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then, faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. A preacher called and sent by God will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's our staple. If we're called, we're going to preach Jesus because things happen after Jesus' name in regards to heaven opening, opening up. I say that there are some who don't obey the report of the gospel. So how can they believe when they reject the report that Jesus Christ is Lord? Heaven cannot be released to individuals if they don't believe the report that Jesus is Lord and Lord of the gospel. How can heaven be released if Jesus is not preached? So every preacher in here and those abroad should be excited about preaching who Jesus is, why he came, and the kingdom that is subject to him and the church that has been called by him to release heaven in the earth. So now I want to talk about the Holy Spirit releases the power of heaven to earth. Jesus said one thing, and he made it clear to the disciples. He says, don't leave this upper room until you receive the promise. When we read in the Bible, Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22 we will see where the Holy Spirit was sent and given to Jesus to start his ministry. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit uh, descended and it came upon the Lord Jesus Christ as the form of, the, of a dove, in the form of a dove. Okay, so ministry cannot begin unless everything lines up with the gospel in order for the power of the kingdom to be released. Now, this has been lost in the church. But the church has become encouraged now to get back to how you release the kingdom of heaven through repentance and through the gospel in order for people to get the good news, as the scripture says. Some don't believe in that report, but I do. I believe that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess at that name. So in order to bring life, the gospel must be preached. But well, some preachers' feet are not beautiful. They preach a different kind of gospel, and they articulate a different type of doctrine. It's called false doctrine. Now, the reason why the church is not feeling power as it should is because the gospel has been preached incorrectly by some pastors, some churches, some teachers and even witness incorrect, be incorrectly because of how people have been taught. All right, Believers Worship Center. So we want to see the power of God come to life in the body of Christ because we have been chosen as a church to know how to do it. And to know how to do it is to understand what the gospel means when it is preached. So how do we articulate that gospel? How do we talk about Jesus Christ? How do we talk about his coming? Well, Jesus made something very clear. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Because he inspired his apostles 
to write these epistles. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And I'm going to read verse number 5. And then I will come down to verse number 8. I always like to substantiate everything that I'm saying to you so when you're following me, you know that I'm telling you the truth by preaching this gospel. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Now, Jesus makes it clear in verse number five, because he's going to get beyond water baptism. The Lord said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, what I'm trying to connect here is that we're understanding this. Repentance, gospel, Holy Spirit. Repentance, gospel, Holy Spirit. That should be the standard of our confession. Person has to repent first. When they repent, heaven opens up. They, convert, they become converted. Salvation is given to them once that they truly have submerged their spirit and their soul into this gospel that they are being taught. We'll see a scripture on that in a minute. Then we see that from the receiving of the gospel, here comes the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can only work based upon God sending him to fulfill the word of God. So ministry is about the Holy Spirit fulfilling the word of God in order, in order for the evidence of Jesus's ministry to be fulfilled and seen in the church. Now, this is where the church has to become more connected because the Bible lets us know this when, when we read them scriptures that Jesus is the head of the church. So if Jesus is the head of the church and we are his body, and I'm glad that this particular ministry is a part of the body of Christ, that means we're responsible for fulfilling the kingdom of heaven and knowing how to do it. So I want us to know how to bring forth the kingdom of heaven because it's not just about how good you can do some works. You have to be filled that anointing flow through you in order for the work to come to pass. And I'm, I'm talking about effective under an anointing. People can, can work, 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 work. They're not full of the Holy Spirit. And by them not full, full of the Holy Spirit, really the Holy Spirit can't move because their life is not the reality of what the gospel is saying for them to become or to do. Okay, so if the anointing is not working off of the gospel, it's because the person is rejecting spiritual growth. Okay, so let's look at verse number eight. But when you shall receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So who is Jesus talking to? He's talking to his 11, but he's also talking to us. He's letting us know how important it is that now the ministry of Jesus Christ has been given to the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read in Acts chapter 1, it would tell you all the identifications of what apostle uh, is and did to be an apostle for Christ. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say something and I'm going to say it again. That ministry is over with. The apostles' ministry has been fulfilled. We're in the era now of the church. Now, we know we got a lot of people going around calling themselves apostles and they apostle this and apostle that. But I'm telling you as the Believer's Worship Center, that area of ministry is completely over. All of them have died and have been, uh, what's the word I want to use? Jesus said that they will be put to death. Okay, so when that ministry ended, God put 
the church in order. Through their ministry, the church was put in order pertaining to how the gospel was going to be preached. Now, I want to hang on to this for a minute because the power of the Holy Spirit is the anointing that releases heaven and the earth. So I have to have the Holy Spirit in order to release heaven to you or whoever else that I'm preaching to. But you know, I want to stay in my place. I want to stay in the realm that I have grown in. And I don't want to go to another level based upon what I want to do, but how God sanctions me or releases me to do it. Now that's the problem in the church. Folk try to get ahead of the Holy Spirit which is the anointing that God uses to break the yokes. He told them, don't go nowhere. You all up here interceding and you're praying in this, <clears throat> in this room. But what I want you all to do is to stay in this room. Stay here. Don't even come out until you receive this baptism. Now, immediately when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came, Peter was empowered to go out and preach. And his message won 3,000 people to Christ. 3,000 people repented. They first thought that people were being drunk and all of the different ethnicities that were in Jerusalem at that time. But what they heard was the wonderful works of God in different languages. That's power. That's anointing. That's authority. Man can't do that. Man cannot do that. All these different ethnicities, these different languages, and people are saying the wonderful works of God. I want you to see how God begins to build a pattern in the church to show his power, his authority, that any given time he wants to, he can bring different types of tongues that someone can understand his purpose and what he's trying to accomplish according to the gospel and the Holy Spirit will bring that and can bring that to pass but guess what the church is not used to it and the church is not used to it simply because there's not enough repentance there's not enough growth with the gospel Jesus name is not being used enough in the church so now the people cannot experience that anointing that God wants to bring to pass through the Holy Spirit. So let's see what the anointing does. Go to Acts chapter 8. You're familiar with this scripture because all of us has preached it so many times. But Acts chapter 8 is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. There is no other foundation that can be laid. So there is no new ministry. What has to be preached and what has to be taught is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So now we have these people that try to clone other ministers, you know, because of their, their riches or their wealth, and they make up a gospel that is not anointed, and we look at people sitting in church and they don't repent from the, from the gospel because the gospel is not being preached. So how can they hear except a preacher is sent by God. So God is saying what I want to show in the body of Christ now is people that I have sent because people that I have sent is plain, they're simple, they're not preaching to get wealth, they're not preaching to be seen, they're not preaching to be the king of ministry. You know, we, we, we have to acknowledge that only Jesus can put somebody in a place of authority. Yes, yes, yes. Only Jesus. Acts chapter 8, here's an individual that is preaching the gospel that didn't come from the 11. So now he's going to all of the world to preach this gospel and Jesus made that statement to the 11, stay in the upper room. Stay in the upper room. Don't depart until I give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But now here comes the church. The church now is being built through men that God has chosen to bring a gospel that will not fade and will never go away. Heaven and earth may pass away, Jesus says, but my word will never pass away. 
verse number five. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in the city. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power unto salvation. As a church, we're building up our most holy faith to be respected when God put us on the scene with preaching the simplicity of the gospel to bring results because the most important thing that heaven wants to see as a result is that number one, we repent from our sins. So I'm not gonna try to get into all of this great miracle work and this great healing when we don't sit down and observe ourselves and don't repent from our sins. The gospel causes you to repent from your sins. If you don't repent from your sins, how are you gonna be trusted with a powerful jewel? That's what I call the word of God. We should be living understanding what we are saying from the gospel and knowing that no one can enter into the presence of God. Listen to this now. No one can enter into the presence of God unless they repent. So when we're teaching people that salvation only comes, and this is the, this is the most important part of ministry to me as far as doctrine is concerned. Doctrinally, this is the most important part of ministry to me, that salvation is being preached for a person to receive Christ. If we get used to doing that, then you will see the anointing begin to break yokes because we're disciplined telling people you must repent in order for heaven to be released. That has to be a consistent part of our conversation. Our conversation has to be, well, have you repented of this? Have you repented of what you said? Oh, you hurt somebody? Have you repented of that? Even your thoughts. Do you repent of the thoughts that come to your mind to become an action towards someone or even towards yourself? A thought can come, commit adultery, and you follow that through. A thought can come, commit fornication, and you follow that through. A thought can come, lie, and you follow that through. A thought can come, let's take this drink, and you follow that through. A thought can come, nobody see me, let me hit some of this marijuana, and guess what? It becomes a part of a life that needs to repent. So these are common things that people go through. Every day, there's some kind of thought that comes to our mind. Every day we're challenged. Every day we're tempted. Every day we have to know how to bring the presence of God. <clears throat> there are times that I have to sit down, and I say this quite a bit. You should too. Lord, I made a mistake. That has nothing to do with anybody else. Lord, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. Immediately, heaven is released to me because God says, this man is humble. So by this man being humble, I can trust him that pride will never override him to the point that he think more of his own stability, his own persona, his own reputation, then repenting before me, saying, Lord, remove this thing from my heart or remove it from my mind. I want heaven to be released. And in order for heaven to be released, I have to follow through with this gospel knowing it is the power unto salvation. I'm not interested in preaching anything else. I'm not interested in preaching how I can help you to get more money by making up scriptures in the Bible. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested, but li listen to me. I'm not interested in how you getting your home. All I'm interested in 
is that you will seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And God says, I will add all of these things. Now, what I just preached was the gospel of Christ. There are so many times that Christians don't get the fullness of the Lord simply because of one word, repentance. They will not repent. I want to go to this particular scripture. God is leading me to go there. I'm kind of getting away from my note right now. But I want to go to the Gospel of John. Let's go to the Gospel of John chapter 20, verse number 21. Jesus appears to the apostles and he's giving them a commission. Now I'm talking about at times how we have to really look at why heaven is not released to people through the church. The Gospel of John chapter 20 and I'm going to start at verse number 21. And Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And now we got apostles being sent because their epistles are going to be recorded for the church to walk in the affairs of the gospel. Verse number 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's letting them know. I want you all to receive the Holy Spirit because he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you in all truth and he's going to deal with your heart. Now here's a controversial scripture, verse number 23. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now this scripture definitely is dealing with releasing the kingdom of God and is dealing with people. So I want to see heaven released on earth. I want to see heaven released on earth. But at times, and this is not a negative because I'm saying but at times, but it's true at times in church, we run into people that won't repent no matter how much you say, I love you, I forgive you, they still won't repent. And even though you sit down and you may talk to them, and I've heard this before, and I will correct somebody in a minute if an offense has come. If I have offended you, what do you mean if? We're here because there is an offense. So there's no such thing as if I offended you. I want to see heaven released down here on earth between the two of us. But at times, pride is so strong in individuals, they will not repent. So how do you handle that when a person don't repent of their sin? In your face, behind your back, on your side, on the left, on the right. How, how, how do you handle that? This is where we have to walk in the knowledge of God. Because if people are going to play games, why are you going to sit there and waste your time with them? The Bible says if you go into a city and the city don't receive you, you dust your feet and you move on. If you go into a house and the house doesn't receive you, you leave your peace and you just move on. Well, that's exactly what we did. So this is what happens. I say, Lord, I turn this over to you. And when I turn this over to you, this is what happened. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Lord, I did my job, but I'm leaving this in your hand because in the day of judgment, they have to deal with that. 
See, when you walk in the knowledge of God, you know how to deal with spiritual warfare. But you have to be wise in how you deal with spiritual warfare. So therefore, the anointing and the grace of God in my life knows how to cover this congregation. And I know who to bring into the circle and who not to bring into the circle to deal with these situations. So I'm just not going to just bring anybody in, in, on, on into this circle. But the Bible says that, look, you got to have two or three witnesses when you're dealing with correction in the church. See, God backs up the truth of a life. But it doesn't mean you're not going to go through something. People can be very, very treacherous. And if they don't repent, that sin is retained. Now, I know that. At times, and I do this all the time, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. But it's up to God to deal with an unrepented heart. It's not up to me. It's up to him. But I'm going to stay clean. I'm going to keep my heart clean. I'm going to keep my mind clean. I'm going to forgive you. But you know what? Because I'm going to forgive you, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to remember. Even God remembers. He has a book called Remembrance, and everything about our life is recorded for us to be accountable to the day that we stand in front of him. So we're not getting away with anything. But it's foolish that you're trying to prove how much you love somebody. The Bible tells me to love my enemies, but he didn't tell me to hang with them. So you want to show love. And you want to show love the wrong way. Love is obeying what the word of God is. The Bible says that if a person doesn't repent, we read that in the Bible. If a person doesn't repent of their sins, we're talking about the gospel. The gospel is life. The gospel is truth. If a person doesn't repent of their sins, the Bible calls them. Have you ever read that before? What the scripture says? When you take two or three witnesses and you deal with that? And if they don't repent, what happens when they don't repent? What does the Bible say? I'm asking a question. Huh? I'm, I'm asking you a question. What does he call them? The scripture says he calls them a heathen and a tax collector. That's what Jesus said. A heathen and a tax collector. Okay, so if I'm going to deal with a situation like that, I would say, well, even the Lord said that you're a heathen. Even the Lord said that you're a tax collector. You don't have a heart to have any mercy on anybody. Give me my money. Give me my money. I want my money right now. You, you, have, you have no leniency towards anybody. It's all about what you want. But Jesus says, a person like that, he's a heathen. I never want the Lord to call me a heathen. I never want you to call me a heathen. And I never will act as a tax collector. It's not even in my spirit to do such things. But when we read this scripture, we have to read this scripture to understand that heaven does retain and record sins when men are too proud to repent. All it takes is believing the gospel. You receive salvation, so why can't you believe the gospel that you received? Okay, I want to do this real quick. Uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go there. I want to see heaven released on earth. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. Now this is where all of us should be in our heart towards God pertaining to the gospel. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of, of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation. Romans 1 and 16. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power unto salvation. Now the Bible is saying in him, in who? In him, in Christ, God the Father. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit sealed me, so now that I'm living in him, I understand heaven. I'm not living on earth and not understanding heaven. I'm not living on earth, earth and not understanding the knowledge of the gospel. 
I'm not living down here on earth and not knowing how to fight a warfare when people are carnal and in their flesh. Things happen, but how do you release heaven to come down here on earth to bring the peace that Jesus said is supposed to be in the church? If we would practice this, and I believe we do, what the Bible tells us, love one another. <clears throat> Pray for one another. Just hearing those words, it lives in my heart that I refuse to be at variance with anybody. Why? Because I want to be strong in the Lord and I want to be powerful in his might. So I'm not going to walk around allowing my spirit to be controlled by my flesh or by demonic powers that work in heavenly places to try to persuade me to be nasty, to be evil, and to be uncomfortable with you. I'm not going to be uncomfortable with members of my church. Okay, well, I feel a little challenged there. I'm going to show you why I'm not going to be uncomfortable. Verse number 14, who is, the, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase, possession to the praise of his glory? I want to tell you why I feel fulfilled in the Lord when it comes to his power. See, I'm working on God trusting me. And it's not so much in the company of you, but it's when I'm alone or if I have somebody on the street. The healing can work for me because my heart is pure. A miracle can come to pass when I pray for it because my heart is pure. Because my actions are according to the gospel of Christ. How do I get there for heaven to be released on the earth? Everybody doesn't want to follow this simple truth. But I, in him, I have trusted in the gospel that has saved me that has delivered me, meaning that if I am delivered, I'm a changed individual. I'm not a sin anymore. I don't live in the earth to convert my activities back to the flesh. I live, hallelujah, to be holy and to be righteous and to know how to keep my sanity when everything falls out of place. It's important that my mind be sound. So God wants to protect me. How does he protect me? He says the anointing first, if it's going to break the yokes, then you have to understand it. You have to understand the anointing because when you walk in the grace of my anointing, nothing is going to defeat you from your thought pattern to, to your heart for me and to your confession, your confession to me. And, and even more so, when you stand up here and preach, and everybody is against you. I'm not talking about my church. I'm talking about maybe some other churches that God had me to preach. And everybody is against you. I'm protecting you because I want you to always operate in this. In this is what I want you to operate in. Now, what I'm going to say is very, very simple, but you can do it. I endeavor to keep the peace. Remember I said that? Yeah. See, it's not always my responsibility to come to you. What's wrong? Why are you acting like this? Why are you like that? No, I'm, I'm genuinely talking. I mean, all of us have been there before. But that's a lot of time. That's a lot of mental activity when a person just needs to obey the gospel and confess the truth. Yes. This is what's bothering me. I don't understand if we already collected $900 why the podium isn't here. So God says, deal with that thought. $900 was collected, but the men is going to finish paying to get the podium that is needed here. But the thought that will go out, where is the $900, Bishop? I know that comes and it resonates in people's minds. I know that. You have no idea of the amount 
of millions that we're trying to deal with right now to bring this church to own its own identity in its own building. And it's going to take, what I'm, what I'm talking about here, it's going to take all of us to participate in this because it is the anointing. It is God what I'm about to say. And it is God talking to us what I'm about to say. All right, so we want to see miracles and we want to see healings and demons cast out. But we have to come to this place first because I want to know how I can keep the peace. And the only way I can keep the peace and to keep my sanity is to obey what has been written. And believe me, when the challenges come, the Holy Spirit brings everything to my remembrance that Jesus Christ said as a promise for me. Don't leave this room. You wait for the promise. Well, the Holy Spirit can fulfill a whole lot of promises that you cannot keep. But this is one thing I can keep. I can keep this in the presence of God. And I practice this in my heart. And I practice this in my mentality. See, this is why the door has not been closed yet on that building. My conduct has to be right. My feet has to be beautiful. I don't care how many bunions or calluses may be on them. But when it comes to preaching the gospel, believe me, my feet are beautiful. Well, Bishop, you're boasting. Well, if I am, at least I'm boasting in the Lord according to what the scriptures say. All right, so here's something. Everybody can participate, and I'm going to come back on next week, and we're going to, con we're going to conclude this on next week about releasing heaven and earth because I want to see the power of God move so strong on the lives of the members in this church that you will understand this that whatever you desire or have on your heart the Lord will move and be responsible to you for his presence because of this one specific thing so there are two scriptures I'm going to read and I'm going to close this because you know where I'm going Galatians 5:22. <clears throat> Jesus said this, he says, the anointing is upon me. He has called me to preach the gospel. Our Lord was so fruitful. He walked in nothing but the character of God. Even on the cross, he wouldn't come down. If you're the son of God, come down off of this cross. Jesus had a testimony. I could talk to the water and say, peace. Peace, peace, be still. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, nothing can stop this power that is God's character when you exercise it in your mind. It's in your heart. Now you got to exercise it in your mind. Your soul has to become full of this. That is your thought pattern. I don't care how angry you get. I don't care how mad you get at someone. Understand love does what? It suffers long. Oh, this person gets on my nerves. They ask me the same question over and over and over again. But love suffers long. Well, my child has gone wayward, and this is happening, and, that, and that's happening. But love suffers long. Well, me and the wife, we just can't get together. We just can't uh, uh, agree on anything. But love suffers long. Somebody has to be in a position to say, I'm going to suffer for you. I'm going to suffer till the peace comes. I'm going to suffer for you. I don't care how much you get on my nerves, what you say, what you do. I'm going to suffer for you. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to suffer for you. I'm not going to give up. The devil is not going to persuade me. My flesh is not going to persuade me. I am not 
going to give up on you. And you mean to tell me that God is not watching you? When he says, wow, look at the power of my character in this individual. If David can slay a lion, then you can slay your flesh. Because it's not that tall, it's not that big, it's just you. Slay it. Put it to death. Put it to death. When we look at what we're missing in Christ, it is the fruit. And when we don't walk in that, how can the power come? Heaven just been released. Look at the freedom and the liberty as a result of people saying, I want more fruit. I want more fruit. I want more fruit. I want more character. Say that with me. I want more fruit. This is what I'm going to conclude, and we'll be back on next Sunday. The Gospel of John, chapter 15. This is a promise to you. I want to give you your promise because we're going to be a church that is mighty. Oh, boy, we're going to, we're going to change the community. Hallelujah. We're going to bring change. And there's not going to be a message of what you can get and what, how much faith you got to stretch it to get this and to get that. It's going to be about salvation. It's going to be about the heart being cleansed, the mind being pushed in the direction that it knows how to think right. This is what we're bringing, hallelujah, to the community. We're bringing that power. And then you're going to see people running to the altar. You're going to see people getting in touch with elders. Come pray for me. Speak to me. Why? Because they're going to say, what must I do to be saved? Now, this is your promise. I'm going to end with this. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse number 7. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Let me read that to you again. Believe this now. Believe this because verse number 8 is, is, is the answer. It says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear what? Much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Bishop Larry H. Jordan Sr., my time has run out. I'll see you in next week. We're moving people in the right direction. And we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation or pay your tithes and offering, please go to tbwc.org slash give. We have begun our Moving People in the Right Direction pledge campaign, and $12 is all it takes to help us to purchase and complete the construction of our building. Your donation can be made at tbwc.org. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. online or on Facebook. It is our pleasure to introduce our new online Christian education program, The Believer's Bible Institute. Registration is now open for individuals interested in furthering their knowledge of the Word of God. Please visit bbitbwc.com for more information and to view our current course offerings. Jesus said, Come unto me. Join us for prayer every Friday at 7 p.m. You can submit a prayer request by emailing us at prayer at tbwc.org.